just tap exporter. So exactly. Please. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, we have plenty of time. I submitted this as a lightning talk and was allocated in an hour. So um, if you have questions or uh, comments or anything, please feel free to to interrupt me. And uh, does anybody uh, use Prometheus already, uh, or is this new for everybody? Oh, a few people. Okay, you heard of it. Great. Uh, we got a. A Prometheus exporter in FreeBSD 12, so somebody in the FreeBSD world at least uh, knows and uses Prometheus, apart from me. So this was uh, a few months ago. I uh, I wrote uh, an exporter to uh, to make disk utilization metrics available to Prometheus uh, from FreeBSD, and uh, and I was encouraged to to come here and, and talk about it. I did a blog post about it and uh, was encouraged to come here and. Uh, and tell you. So, uh, since many people probably don't know Prometheus, I'll start out by uh, talking a little bit about what it is and what it does and why it's awesome, and um, then the concept of uh, exporters, and then uh, we'll get to GSTAT and the actual uh, exporter that I wrote for that. Uh, I also have a, a Grafana dashboard to actually visualize the data collected. And uh, if everything works and my internet connection keeps working, then um, I have a live demo of some servers at my uh, workplace using this. So it's always nice to see some actual real data. Um, but I'm not making any promises because my connection has been flaky. So let's see when we get to it. Live demos are always, uh, <laughs> as you know, a bit tricky sometimes. So. My name is uh, Thomas Rasmussen. Uh, I'm called Tykling on the internet. Uh, I'm uh, born and, and live in Copenhagen, in Denmark. And I do um, system architecture, uh, build and, uh, and administer FreeBSD servers. Um, I do some programming as well and uh, was recently laid off with three months with salary, so I'm just uh, going to fast them and uh, relaxing and enjoying myself at the moment and looking for something else to do. Um, I run a DNS service called Uncensored DNS for 10 years now, uh, 11 years, uh, which is before Google DNS and before all the other public uh, recursive DNS server services. Um, I started this as an alternative to the ISP censored, uh, often censored uh, ISP DNS servers. Um, and it's been running since. I also help organize uh, Born Hack, which is an annual Danish hacker camp. I highly recommend uh, going. It is a great time. It's a week with tents and laptops and hacking around with all kinds of fun things. Um, and I have a bunch of uh, minor uh, open source projects uh, on GitHub. I use FreeBSD uh, exclusively on servers. I've used this since. 5.2.1, I think, was my uh, my first installed server. And uh, on my laptops, I run something called Cubes OS, which is an awesome operating system. I wish uh, it was FreeBSD based, but it's uh, Fedora and uh, Zen based. It's uh, the concept is you have uh, different virtual machines for different uh, contexts. So I have one for work and one for playing with the bone hack stuff, and and they can really disposable browsers uh, for uh, for surfing, so uh, the VM just disappears. So if you happen to click something bad, then it just nothing really happens. So awesome concept. So um, I'm here to talk about uh, this uh, GSTAT exporter. Um, this is actually the first time I've been in the uh, BSD room. Uh, there's never been room, but uh, one of the perks of being a speaker is uh, that uh, you have to let me in. So. Um, I wrote this tweet, and, uh, and someone picked up on it and, uh, and recommended I come to, uh, to Fustum and talk about it, and here we are. So Prometheus, in their own words, it's an open source monitoring system, dimensional data model, flexible query language, efficient time series database. And that is uh, pretty much it. Uh, it is very, uh, the, the whole ecosystem around it is very unix -y in that, that they do one thing and they do it well. Uh, Prometheus in itself is uh, is a time series database. It really doesn't do anything except collect metrics and stick them in a time series database. And then they have, it has an API to make them available to Grafana, for example, so you can pull the data back out. Uh, 
it doesn't do alerting. It has something, uh, there's something called Alert Manager, which uh, from the same team, but it's a separate, separate uh, piece of software, separate configuration file and stuff, which handles alerting and um, alert dependencies and uh, which team should get what alert and uh, page should do the support and all that stuff. Uh, Monitoring has often, I think, been uh, in many years been. Uh, it's been a bit of a, a like there was a void left when Nagios kind of stopped being modern, and uh, I've been I've been using Sabix and a few other things, but nothing has really been. It's like they try to do too much somehow. Uh, it's a big job both to gather the data and visualize it and do alerting and everything, and I haven't really been happy with anything, and I think. You know, like the first time you tried ZFS and thought, this is what a file system should have been like all along. Where have you been all my life? This is uh, how I feel about monitoring with uh, Prometheus. It is an excellent system. So uh, it is based on, they call it dimensional time series data. Um, it means that uh, your metrics can have labels, they call it. Uh, so uh, if you have a metric called HTTP requests total, for example, for a web server, then uh, and you get a number when you when you scrape the data, say you had a hundred requests, um, then that data can be can have multiple dimensions in that it can have labels to say uh, what the path of the request was or what the HTTP status code was. So you can ask to get only the uh, HTTP 404 requests, for example, and then make a graph of those on your uh, in your Grafana. Um, this is incredibly powerful. It's actually a, a, a relatively simple concept, but it, it it enriches the data greatly. Uh, Prometheus and uh, Alert Manager and all the uh, accompanying software is all written in Go. Um, it was uh, it was started at uh, SoundCloud uh, some years ago. It's been uh, open source since 50, 2015, and uh, there's no company that owns it now. It's a, a regular open source project with uh, many com contributors and a great community, a great ISC channel and stuff. So if you have uh, questions, uh, they're very happy to help. So this is the, the diagram of the ecosystem from their website. Um, central to the whole thing is the Prometheus server. It's a time series database. And um, it stores the metrics, of course, on, uh, on some sort of uh, disk storage. It's a pull model, Prometheus. That's one of the things that um, some people has to get used to, um, which means that Prometheus connects to the stuff it's monitoring and pulls the metrics over HTTP. There's Various ways around that if you absolutely cannot do it like that, but but that is the idea. For example, the FreeBSD SysCTL exporter that came and uh, arrived in FreeBSD 12 is supposed to be run uh, in INETD, uh, under INETD, and uh, Prometheus connects to it and, uh, and pulls out the metrics. Um, so, and that, that's what the, uh, the exporters make available. They uh, open an HTTP endpoint, and uh, it's just a plain text key value uh, list of, of lines. I'll have examples later. Um, there's something called push gateway that uh, if you have a job that runs for an hour and then has some metrics to submit at the end of that, uh, you can use push gateway for that. It has a very um, extensive service discovery system. So if you are a AWS or a Kubernetes user or you use one of the many, many cloud services available, there's probably a discovery service discovery thing available for it. Um, at work, I, uh, I work at an, uh, or worked at an ISP until I got laid off. Um, we used the file service discovery thing and just exported a list of customers and IP addresses and that was automatically ingested by Prometheus. So when we add a new customer in our central provisioning system, it automatically shows up in, uh, and starts pulling the data from it. And um, to, uh, to talk to uh, Prometheus and, uh, and uh, query the data and get it out, uh, they, they invented something called PromQL. It is, uh, well, it doesn't really have anything to do with SQL. Uh, it is a, a, qu a custom query language uh, specifically for this, and there will be examples of this later. And it is a very powerful and uh, easy to use uh, language. And like I said, Alert Manager is a separate component, so when, uh, when, uh, when you add some threshold or something you want to be alerted on in Prometheus, um, it pushes an alert to Alert Manager, and Alert Manager handles all the nitty gritty with the who is on vacation now and who has the duty and who does what. Um, so all that complexity is, is separate from uh, Prometheus. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, we generally speak of black box and white box monitoring. Black box monitoring is when you ping your whatever or, or just poke something from the outside, check if it's listening on port 80 or whatever you might do. White box monitoring is when the, the thing being monitored is, is kind of in the game. Uh, so, so, for example, uh, the previous DCCL exporter is a good example, or uh, an exporter for, yeah, for GSTAT data, for example. Uh, means you're, you're kind of inside the system exposing the metrics to the outside, and that's a, a much better way to do it than, uh, than black box monitoring. It has support for that as well. Uh, if, if you need to, like we do at work, ping 10,000 customers every five seconds, then uh, you do that with uh, something called black box exporter. But, but mostly and primarily it is uh, white box monitoring. It is supposed to be used uh, with, uh, with the uh, exporters built into whatever you are monitoring. Uh, so if you have a system like our uh, um, provisioning system at work, um, it's easy to, for example, export metrics for the queue length for provisioning the customers, the router needs to be, uh, the switch ports need to be configured and there's sometimes a queue with, if there's many changes at once. And um, it's very easy when you're in the code to export this metric and just uh, do a slash Prometheus or slash metrics uh, endpoint in your, in your system and, uh, and export it. Uh, it's over HTTP, like I said, uh, and it is designed to to handle everything you can throw at it. Uh, you don't you shouldn't be picky. You should uh, instrument all parts of your system, uh, anything that might someday make sense, and even if you think it doesn't, because sometimes these subtle little changes in whatever can uh, turn out to be uh, to be important, and then it's very nice to have the history. It is uh, it is very efficient. Uh, it is designed to handle uh, hundreds of thousands of metrics in, on a single. Uh, uh, single server commodity hardware. Um, it doesn't do, uh, it has a little bit of, uh, you can, when you're exploring the data in the Prometheus web interface, it, it can draw a, a simple crude graph, but it's not meant for graphing. It's meant to be used with Grafana or something else, but I highly recommend it. It's excellent integrated into uh, Grafana. Um, there's client libraries in many languages. The GStat export I wrote is written in Python, and you start out with these. Um, 10 lines or something from the Prometheus example client, and you just add name, define your metrics, saying we have a, in GSTAT, we have a disk IO busy percent message, uh, metric or whatever, and, uh, and you know, feed data into them, and it takes care of listening on, uh, on HTTP and, uh, and serving the data up in the, in the right order, and it's, uh, it is easy to use, and they have, of course, in, in Go and uh, many other languages, uh, client libraries. So it, it is easy to get started writing your own exporter. So it, um, it is, like I said, very efficient. Uh, they say about three and a half bytes per data point. Uh, and it is remarkably uh, efficient when pulling in data. Uh, we went to, we replaced our Sabox installation, which was thrashing the disks uh, using uh, Postgres as a backend. I love Postgres. Uh, I don't love Savix, but it was a, a decent setup. But it was, I mean, we, it, we could barely handle uh, polling them once per minute, the five, 8,000 customers, or however much we had back then. And when we switched to Prometheus, we're polling them once every five seconds. We're doing additional metrics besides what we did with Savix, and the server is bored now. It's still doing nothing. So we went from uh, absolutely thrashing the drives to the server being almost idle. Uh, it is amazingly uh, efficient. Uh, if you go beyond what one server can handle, um, it supports uh, sharding and federation, so you can have many Prometheus servers working together, uh, and it does that very, very well. And uh, Alert Manager as well uh, supports high availability stuff, so you can uh, send an alert to any number of Alert Manager instances, and only one of them will actually alert you. Um, at, uh, at work, um, the, the Prometheus installation I, I was managing there is, had about 750,000 time series and about 13,500 per second uh, metrics put into the database. And that's small in Prometheus terms. That's uh, uh, um, not an issue at all. You can do that on a laptop or on whatever. Um, it's uh, in a jail. All my stuff uh, runs in jails. And, um, you can easily have like one for each team. It's not like managing an elk instance or something like that where you have to 
you can just web up a new if you if you want one for the network team and one for the operations team or whatever you can easily do that um, okay so the query language prompt ql uh, I, I brought a few few examples and it's easy to look up uh, it has uh, yeah a, a page or two and then you if you understand basic uh, basic statistics and math uh, then um, then it should be easy to use uh, first things first uh, http requests total uh, is the example metric we're using here uh, so that's a that's a, that was the uh, internet connection that stopped working. Um, so that just returns the metric HTTP request total. Um, if, for example, I want the metric, but only if the job label is API server and the handler is slave slash API slash comments, then um, I put it in the curly brackets and uh, the, it only returns uh, the number of HTTP requests that had those uh, those labels. Um, you can also uh, return a range vector, so you get you get all the values for a given, for for example, for a five-minute interval. Uh, if you need that, uh, you can use regular expressions for the labels, and um, and you can do uh, fuzzy matching and stuff for the uh, for the label values as well. I use those labels a lot in the GSAT exporter to save stuff like the disks, uh, serial numbers, and uh, stuff. Uh, we'll get to that later. Um, a bit more advanced, it has, it has some keywords to do, uh, for example, uh, it can calculate uh, the rate over five minutes uh, for, for this metric, or even do uh, uh, quantile, uh, 95th percentile is uh, used a lot when, um, when charging for bandwidth and hosting operations and stuff like that, or whether, wherever you need to, um, to use it, and it is, uh, it is very flexible. It can also show uh, the you can query the the alert the number of alerts firing in a system and when when the installation grows uh, that's the sort of stuff you want on your front page of your Grafana instance you can have uh, zero or five alerts or whatever. Okay, so uh, Prometheus connects to an exporter and gets uh, fed metrics and ingests them, uh, and these um, metrics are exported by by exporters and machine metrics like like the normal metrics like uh, ram and uh, an io and network traffic and stuff like that are exported by something called node exporter which we have in ports um, and it works well but on freebsd it doesn't have uh, disk utilization metrics it has does on linux uh, of course but uh, but not on freebsd uh, which is why I started out because when you're troubleshooting stuff on a database server or something, it is very nice to have uh, metrics for for disk utilization. Um, there's exporters for every type of software you can almost imagine. It, it is uh, there's hundreds of them. Uh, each is allocated a port. On this list, you just go to the wiki and allocate a port. And uh, for the GStat exporter, I got port. 92 something something um, but uh, but that's a good list and you can search for FreeBSD on it and find a few others that there's, there's a jail exporter which is very nice that somebody made uh, that uses RCTL to get uh, IOPS and memory use and stuff for uh, for jails and then uh, exports it in a in a way so uh, Prometheus can ingest it so you can get graphs to say how much RAM each jail is using and how many IOPS and stuff and that is very nice if you're using jails for yeah, if you're using jails at all. Okay, so, you know, I guess you all know GSTAT. Uh, it looks like this. It is a, a top style uh, thing that shows the, the uh, geom devices and uh, uh, read and write operations uh, per default. It can show uh, deletes and, uh, and other stuff as well. Um, I actually have no wait. I don't because I'm not online. Okay, so this is GSTAT, uh, and these these are the numbers I was interested in getting into a graph. And um, 
that's why we're here today. <laughs> um, there's a dash C uh, flag for, uh, for GSTAT that makes it uh, output in, uh, in CSV mode, it's called in the man page, instead of uh, the top style display. And um, unfortunately, a, a bit of a, a complaint would be that uh, it ends, it, it, when you enable dash C, it also enables um, endless mode, so it keeps running. You can't just make it output values once and exit. Um, so that's, uh, that should probably uh, be added. Uh, because usually in, uh, in uh, exporters, when Prometheus connects, you scrape the data and then you return it. Um, but uh, I've had to uh, keep it running endlessly, the GSTAT, and just streaming the output from it into the uh, collector. Um, also, uh, if uh, GSTAT could somehow export the counters, it bases the, uh, the top display on. Um, so these are, you know, the difference between counters and gauges. Uh, and, uh, and we lose a bit of precision because I'm reading the GSTAT values as counters. It shows me how much there's an update frequency in GSTAT, so every five seconds or every one second or something. And, um, and stuff that happens in between, let's say every five seconds, is, is kind of lost. And if you had the counters instead, Prometheus would be able to, it doesn't matter if you read every five or 10 seconds, then uh, you would get all the information. Um, and I'm not a C person, but looking at the code, it looks like it is counters when it comes out of the kernel and, uh, and somewhere it is uh, converted to the, to the human-friendly display that we see in GSTAT. Okay. So with, um, with, with GSTAT, we really have everything we need. Uh, with the dash C mode, we have everything we need to write an, uh, write an exporter. Uh, like I said, the client library, Prometheus client library, is, uh, is easy to get started with. Um, the GSTAT exporter uh, is 240 lines. It sounds like more than it is because it's uh, formatted uh, with these code beautifying tools, and they are very generous with the new lines. Uh, so. Um, it's on GitHub, and uh, yeah, uh, port 9248 is uh, is the GSTAT exporter. It's not a they don't add them to services files everywhere because they're so uh, dynamic and there's so many of them. But um, but they do have the uh, the page on their website or the wiki on GitHub to to keep track of which ports are used by what. Okay, so um, running the exporter locally and um, and grabbing for a DA0 and uh, grabbing for write. This is the uh, output for uh, for the GSTAT exporter. As you see, it's just a uh, plain text. I mean, this is just fetch outputting to uh, to STD out. So it's a it's a plain text response, and it's just lines of a metric name and then labels and then finally uh, a space and then a number, which is the actual value for that metric with that combination of labels for that specific time. Uh, as you can see, I've stuffed all the um, the info I can get from Geome, what's it called, Geome identifier or something. There's a Geome command that can return RPM and all these uh, neat metrics, so I can get, uh, yeah, for example, sector size and RPM and the serial number for the disks and the size, which is very nice because, as we will see later in Grafana, it uh, it makes it easy to. Uh, to filter, for example, and show only the NVMe drives, or only the spinning drives, or only the 12 terabyte drives, or whatever you need. Okay, so as I said, it doesn't visualize stuff by, the, by itself, but uh, the, uh, the integration to Grafana is really good. It can, uh, once you add the Prometheus instance as a data source in Grafana. When you start typing a metric name, it auto-completes it, and it, it really works very, very well. Um, and you can filter uh, dashboards by label values, and I'll show you what I mean by that later. But that, for example, means that I can easily, in Grafana, just select one disk if I'm, if I'm suspecting that one disk is uh, foggy, or select only the 5400 IPM drives across all servers if I should, for some reason have the need for that. Uh, I published the dashboard uh, at, uh, at the Grafana dashboard publishing place. And, um, and if you don't know Grafana, I highly recommend it. It is, hope, it is, um, 
it's very easy to make it, it makes pretty graphs for you like you don't have to uh, decide on colors and stuff it uses colors that look well together and uh, and generally just works extremely well okay I'm gonna need to uh, fix my internet connection so uh, talk among yourself for 30 seconds while I get this <laughs> Just work for the love of... Sorry. <laughs> Yes, uh, I would if I could. It's a long and boring explanation why it doesn't work, but uh, and usually the phone just works. But of course, right now it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys, but uh, it's not going to work. Really? This is great advertisement for Linux. <laughs> well, Fibs is special. It is a bit. I but uh, it really isn't. <laughs> I'm glad I warned that this might happen <laughs> ahead of time. Yes. Okay. So maybe we uh, skip the live demo since it's not working. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'll talk a bit more and then try again in a few minutes when it's had time to recover. Uh, I do have some uh, some screenshots in the beginning that I can go back to, but uh, oh yeah, thanks. Um, it was a pretty quick project. I did it in a day. Uh, started in the morning investigating how how I would do it, and then I wrote the code during the day. And in the evening, I did the dashboard, and uh, then I wrote a blog post and posted it. So it was it, that in in the scope of a, of a day, you can uh, you can write an exporter for something, including uh, doing a nice dashboard and uh, making everything work. Um, if GSTAT gets uh, support for, for outputting just a line and then exiting, uh, I'll probably change the way it, it calls GSTAT so it doesn't uh, keep it running perpetually, but just uh, calls it when it is scraped. Um, and uh, maybe could uh, add flags to uh, support if there's a need for it. Um, GSTAT can show uh, consumers as well as uh, producers in the GEOME stack and uh, and some people might need this for reasons I can't really uh, the Grafana dashboard needs some fine tuning um, and uh, if anybody wants to oh, fuck off. 
if anybody want, feels like helping with that, then, uh, then you're very, very welcome. Um, I'm going to get this one quick uh, final attempt. Well, uh, I have it. Uh, I have it open, fortunately, so we can show you some of the things I was talking about. Um, the labels uh, I add to the <laughs> uh, the, able, the labels I added to the metrics um, can be used in Grafana to make this nice uh, little table in the top that shows. This is a uh, in the top. We have the uh, the uh, the filters that Grafana take makes it possible to to filter by label values. So this shows server names, and this shows uh, the different geomes and the different disk sizes we have, uh, and sector sizes and RPM and stuff. And this is where, would, for example, I didn't know we still had a 5400 RPM drive, but after I installed this, then I uh, got a bit better uh, overview of the entire. Uh, and it's a it's a nice way to see, for example. Serial number. If you know what disk is performing poorly, you can easily see the serial number and ask your on-site hands to uh, to fix it. Um, and other than that, there's uh, sections for each uh, each of the metrics geom exports. So um, there's a latency graph uh, for read, write, and delete latency, and uh, there's a bandwidth uh, section for. Of course, it can't. Yeah. Trust me, there's bandwidth graph behind if uh, I was online. Um, there's an IAPS session, uh, section and, uh, and a queue, the queue, de queue depth. This is showing uh, 30 days. Uh, I've had this running for a, a few months since I wrote it. And uh, one of the fun things is that um, if, you've run, if you've ran a very large um, set of S pools, you probably know that uh, the scrubbing can take almost forever to, uh, to complete. Um, which means that many uh, uh, people with large pools end up doing a, like a nightly scrub job that just pauses it, runs it through the night, and pauses it in the day in the working hours. And that's a fun. Uh, this is the busy percent, and the scrubs are these. Uh, this is 30 days, so you can see we scrub all weekend, and then every night, and then all weekend, and every night. Um, so it's a it's a fun pattern to. Uh, yeah, to observe, and uh, we found we found a bad disk in one of the servers using this. Uh, I can't find the data now, of course, but uh, it works really well to uh, to get an overview of the uh, of the disk utilization, and uh, and that's actually that's all I wanted. <laughs> so uh, so that's very nice. Any questions? We have plenty of time. Yes. Yeah, but it's uh, exported directly from the uh, uh, the string that the uh, Geom uh, info exports. Uh, so I could cut it off and then uh, tell Grafana that it's a byte value and it would uh, humanize it for me. Um, you're right. That would be uh, that would be easy. Uh, Grafana knows. Like it knows, it knows units, so this this graph I've told it that this is a, a number of seconds, and then uh, it shows auto scales the the y-axis to show that this is uh, milliseconds, uh, of course, not seconds. Fortunately, um, so and it understands like megabytes per second and stuff like that. So uh, it is very lovely to work with. Yes. Have you had any trouble with Prometheus or Grafana because you're on FreeBSD instead of Linux, like things like for systemd or stuff like that? Apart from it not exporting disk utilization, <laughs> no. The oh, right. Uh, the question was, uh, have I had any problems running a Grafana or Prometheus on FreeBSD uh, because it's FreeBSD and not Linux? And no, uh, apart from the uh, the node exporter, that's the, the thing that exposes, exposes uh, system metrics like memory and disk I.O. and stuff like that. Apart from it not exporting disk I.O. and not export, exporting uh, ZFS data, uh, then, um, then no, everything uh, works very well. Uh, the ports work perfectly and uh, they are updated uh, timely and run, run very well. Um, 
the latest version or the, the upcoming version of Node Exporter does have uh, FreeBSD ZFS uh, support, uh, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. And uh, combined with this, then you can get a, a great uh, impression of how your storage is doing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, the first one is um, uh, you were touching keywords like uh, alerting and federation and this kind of stuff. So yes. my question is about um, these servers, what you were scraping, uh, yes. they were only scraping endpoints or they were scraped and processed at, at the same site? Uh, or you had one central uh, Prometheus server and then uh, scraping all the endpoints? Yes, one central server that uh, that connects out to you could you configure it, tell it which targets to scrape, and then uh, it just sucks up all the metrics that that uh, that are available at that endpoint. Uh, ever is meant some problem, the delay or the latency? What's no, I mean I, 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 you would think, uh, but no, it just really works very well. Um, it's it's a bit uh, of a radical uh, both the the pull model and the the. The idea that it, uh, like that it, it does the scrape as it connects. So if Prometheus doesn't connect for a while, then there's no data collected. Um, but it really wor works very very well, and um, and turns out that it doesn't matter too much as long as you use counters. It would matter for GStat exporter because you would lose the precision if you reboot your Prometheus server. Then you would lose the five minutes or whatever it takes. But if you have counters available, then uh, then you don't. Because it doesn't matter if, if Prometheus is gone for a while, it'll it'll figure out how to uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Put <laughs> the change in the time. yeah, exactly. Uh, it'll it'll smooth it out. Uh, yeah. So uh, no, uh, it, it works very well, and people are doing some uh, like the big uh, hosting operators. Uh, I have some like they have 500 Prometheus servers doing. Uh, a, a millions and millions of data points per second. Uh, there's some crazy big instances. So for my users uh, with a hundred servers or something, uh, I know it's uh, it's always nice to to have to know that it can handle way more than you need. <laughs> yeah, uh, but this also means that you had one central server, so you had to maintain your alerts uh, on one server, right? So uh, these it are truths or the alert uh, conditions uh, have to be written on one server. Uh, well, the alert manager can is a separate jail. I mean, it could it could be a separate server if if you want it. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. Um, yeah, a different uh, question. Yeah. In the intro of your talk, you mentioned that uh, you take care of this uh, born hack uh, camp. Yes. What's the topic? It is. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, Stuff like this. Uh, it is infosec. It is also hardware, uh, uh, open source, and, uh, and really broad. If you uh, if you've been to the German CCC camp or the Dutch uh, big hacker camps, it is very much inspired by those. Uh, so it is kind of reminds a little bit of first time, except that people live in tents and uh, there's uh, not as many people, <laughs> there, of course. Uh, about 400 people, I think, uh, this, this year, and it's slowly growing. It's the fifth year this time, so uh, and it's an annual event, um, and it's uh, getting traction. It's a lovely little event. So, um, any more questions? Yes. Absolutely. Have used no, not really. I, I've I haven't used it in, in enough to uh, to. I've not set it up. I've only uh, briefly been exposed to it when somebody else had configured it. So I I don't, I don't know enough. But is, you know how you can sometimes sense that something has momentum, like a project. Ha like every I think everywhere I look, Prometheus exporters are popping up like natively inside whatever Nginx or whatever suddenly has. A way to explore, and and that tells me that uh, you know I'm not the only one who feels that this is the the right approach, and uh, and that's very nice because I think uh, I think we have been I've been looking for something nice uh, for monitoring for 
years and years. I've never been really, really happy. Even back when Nagios was the thing to run, I've never really been very happy with it. I think everybody really kind of loved to hate it. Or yeah. So I am so so happy that finally something. Um, and it also, I mean, the aesthetics are also very important because even though technically it's the same numbers if it's an ugly graph or a pretty graph, but it just it still makes a difference. It's nicer to work with. I have respon one response to that. Uh, so just looking at uh, influx, while it's nice to work with in at least some aspects, uh, Prometheus has much, much more advanced math available. Like, for example, in influx, it's not possible in a single query to get, uh, for example, you get the return codes of HTTP requests. In influx, it's not possible to get what proportion of requests were, say, errors. It's possible in graphite, it's possible in Prometheus, it's not possible in influx. In that graph, what's the Sure. Any more questions? I have a quick question because uh, I'm rarely surrounded by a lot of FreeBSD people, so I just. Uh, I'm the BSD guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! I went offline. Oh, and I can't even show it. Okay. Well, the question, no, the pro the problem is, you know, uh, the jail exporter I was talking about, um, which makes it which uses uh, RCTL to export jail metrics, and then um, then you can do graphs for, for example, memory use inside a jail. So I, uh, I use that, of course, because I use jails for all my stuff, and uh, it's very nice to see if a disk is being trashed. You can easily see which jail is uh, causing this, uh, Postgres doing an auto vacuum, or what's going on. RCTL counts shared memory twice in jails, or as many times. I, I have what I, what I have in this tab that I can switch over to because I'm offline. I have two jails on this server. It has a 20, 100, 128 gigabytes of RAM. I have two Postgres jails, and RCTL uh, tells me that one jail is using about 130 gigs, and the other jail is using 80 gigs, which is about 200 gigs, and there's 40 more jails on it. So clearly, uh, something is, is wrong, and uh, I've been able to tr track down as much as it is, I don't know what the fix is, but it is absolutely misreporting uh, memory use in jails, and uh, since if I have 100 Postgres workers and each of them is using 2 gigabytes of RAM, then uh, and, and most of it is shared, what you want RCTL to export is how much memory would be freed if I shut the jail down. I don't care if 100 workers is using 2 gigabytes, you shouldn't report 200 gigabytes memory use. Uh, does anybody know, the, is, is this just a bug, or is, there a re, is this not possible, what I'm asking for, or if, I mean? If it's memory shared between jails, are you even able to tell? No, not between jails, between, between 100 Postgres workers in the same jail, for example. And then each of those, uh, they have a, uh, access to the same shared memory space, and it's been counted 100 times because there's 100 workers. So it tells me that one jail is using 140 gigs of RAM on a 128 gig server, which clearly is not true. I wonder how it would look like if it was running outside of jail, if it would be reported the same way. Uh, it would. But we can, we can talk about it later uh, after. Uh, I just. It's been bugging me uh, because uh, I finally got some nice jail graphs and it, the memory <laughs> if, uh, usage is just way, way off. I was like, what the hell is wrong? How can it be using 300 gigabytes of RAM when it has 128? And RCTL exports the, the V memory use as well. And that's, of course, a, a high number and higher than the, it's 1.2 terabytes of memory, or V memory, I think. But, but the memory use should be, we, we agreed that it should be however much would be freed if the jail was shut down, right? Otherwise, what's the point of reporting? Mem I mean, you see my, you see what I mean? Okay. I think I'll uh, ray open our PR and write to a mailing list and uh, see if I can, uh, if I, I can catch somebody's attention with that. But uh, other than that, uh, the jail exporter is really awesome and stuff like IOPS and uh, that works very well. So you can see which uh, which jail is trashing a disk or or using a, a lot of CPU. 
I think that's it for me. Um, we're done uh, with a quarter, mi uh, a quarter of an hour to spare, so uh, you can use that time to for self-reflection and self-improvement. <laughs> and um, thanks for having me, and uh, I hope you enjoyed first time and my talk. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you.